This is an additional video on the urinary system and it's just covering particular details that might crop up in higher level questions. You know now that urine formation is a three-stage process. There's filtration, reabsorption and secretion. And by now you should be able to state where exactly in the nephron each stage takes place and where in the kidney each stage takes place. But why is the nephron particularly adapted to carrying out filtration, for example? So what are the important adaptions of the nephron for filtration? Filtration takes place in the glomerulus, which is sitting or encapsulated in Bowman's capsule, sometimes referred to as the renal capsule. There are, remember, about one million nephrons in each kidney, so that is a lot of glomeruli, so there's a lot of filtration going on. The glomerulus, as you know, is a ball of leaky capillaries and they are thin walled. So we have to say they are one cell thick, but they're highly porous as well, which is another feature. The blood flow into the glomerulus is under high pressure due to the narrowing of that afferent arteriole into the glomerulus. And as well as that, Bowman's capsule is only one cell thick. So this is another adaptation that facilitates filtration, but we call it ultrafiltration. Ultrafiltration removes a lot of good material, non-waste material from the blood plasma and this needs to be reabsorbed, taken back out of the nephron into the bloodstream as quickly as possible. And most of this takes place at the proximal convoluted tubule. Most reabsorption takes place here. So what are the important features or how is the proximal convoluted tubule adapted to reabsorption? Well, the walls of the proximal convoluted tubule are very thin, so they're only made up of one cell. So you have to be that specific. You have to say one cell thick. The cells are actually covered in these microvilli, these little projections, and this greatly increases the internal surface area for the reabsorption of materials. Something else that needs considering is the reabsorption of glucose and amino acids. Remember, most glucose and most amino acids are reabsorbed by means of active transport. This means that ATP is needed. So the cells of the proximal convoluted tubule must contain many mitochondria because ATP is produced in the mitochondria in that process cellular respiration. It's also worth remembering that surrounding all of the nephron, including the proximal convoluted tubule, is this network of blood capillaries. So materials that pass out of the proximal convoluted tubule are very quickly passed into a blood capillary and back into the blood. So that covers most of the key adaptations that you would need for your exam. Let's just have a look at the loop of Henley because there's one question that you could be asked. So we know it's very important in the reabsorption of water. It's very important in the conservation of water. And what you would find is that animals that live in very hot climates, for example, in a desert, they would have a very long loop of Henley in comparison to animals that live in cold climates, particularly in water, they would have short loops of Henley because they wouldn't have to conserve water. Another important part of this chapter is the control of urine volume and particularly the role of antidiuretic hormone ADH. So let's just go over that very quickly. ADH is made in the hypothalamus but it's secreted by the pituitary gland and remember it acts on the walls of the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct making them more permeable to water resulting in more water being reabsorbed. So what happens if you are dehydrated? When your body needs to conserve water, for example, when it's been excessively sweating or there's been a high intake of salt or you're just dehydrated, ADH is secreted by the pituitary gland and this results in a lot more water being reabsorbed and this will result in very little urine, a low volume of urine being produced but highly concentrated. So when you need to get rid of a lot of excess water, so when your blood plasma has too much water or you've drank a lot of water, basically then no ADH will be secreted. This means that no extra water will be reabsorbed and you'll produce a high volume of very dilute urine. One final scenario to consider is the impact of high protein intake on urine volume. Well, if there is a lot of excess protein, it will be broken down in the liver to produce urea and urea will be excreted in the urine. It will have no bearing or no impact on the volume. You'll just produce a normal volume of urine with a high concentration of urea. This video was just to help you structure your revision of the urinary system. Remember, you must be doing past papers and check the answers with the official marking scheme on examinations.ie. Remember, these videos never replace using a textbook and doing past papers and they never replace listening to your teacher's guidance. Remember, write notes, do past papers. Some of the material used in this video were icons from the Noun Project, as listed here. I'm a pro member, but I still like to credit the artists.